Hello pre-calc. You'll be viewing this video. Let me mess with the lighting here for a second. See if I can get it any better. Alright. Maybe that's better. We're going to be looking at our little puzzles and they're called uh, simplifying trig expressions. And here are some of the big players. We learn lots of trig IDs, but these are the ones, the Pythagorean ones, are the ones I'm going to keep out, keep an eye on. And in this lesson, I'm just going to give you some extra skills for your toolbox when you're simplifying trig IDs. So you'll sleep better tonight. And that's my reminder to set my timer. So there we go. So I have a timer to set my timer. What I want to show you is uh, in our toolbox we had listed some things we would look for and one of those was factoring. So I'm going to mess with factoring these expressions because you might, you might need a refresher on that. And then we're going to look at adding algebraically which means giving the same denominator and combining. So we're going to uh, look at factoring and adding. So we're not going to change the directions. We're still going to be simplifying trig expressions, but we're going to be using these tools in a little um, more complex way that you should be well equipped with, but not, you may need a reminder. So suppose in the middle of your problem you come up with secant theta squared, secant squared theta minus 1. And when you have that, you have usually have to make a substitution. Like over here, we can see that if I pull the 1 over to this side, it becomes secant squared minus 1. So I could substitute in for tangent squared here, if that helps. But sometimes the problem is such that it doesn't. So Sometimes you have to factor that. And I just want to remind you, if factoring helps instead of trig substitution, this is how it will look. So what we're going to do is remember an old truth, a squared minus b squared, and that's called the difference of two squares, and it factors a minus b, a plus b. And if you take the time to distribute the A and then the B, you would see that these two statements are equivalent. So we have to recognize A squared minus B squared. And here it is, A squared minus B squared. This is something squared and this is something squared. So we can apply this form. So instead of writing it as something squared minus something squared, the first thing squared minus the second thing squared, I'm going to write it like this. The first minus the second times the first plus the second. So in this case it's secant theta minus 1 times secant theta plus 1. Do you see how this pattern has been followed in this line here? All right, so with that, we're going to look at a problem where that actually happens. So the problem that I came up with looks like this. Find it here. All right, it is secant squared. I'll put an X in so you can use any old variable and secant of secant x minus 1 on the bottom. All right, so as this stands now, the command is simplify. So we have that choice, secant squared minus 1 I discussed earlier was tangent squared. And but tangent squared here will not cause this to simplify because it'd be over top of a secant minus 1. These do not cancel in any way because they're tied together to two terms divided by two terms. So you can't cross out a secant here and one of the secants here or this one and this one. That only happens when they're factors, when they're connected by multiplication. But when they're connected by addition or subtraction, those kind of simplifications are not mathematically sound. So 
let's look at what we would do. We're going to apply this idea. Secant squared, <coughs> excuse me, minus 1 is a difference of two squares. So I'm going to go secant x minus 1, sorry, secant x minus 1 times secant x plus 1. And then in the bottom I have secant x minus 1. Now that this is held to this by multiplication, this, the, um, mul the operating operator between these two is multiplication. Now I can cancel this whole term with this whole term. So, or this whole factor by this whole factor. And the answer is secant x plus 1. So that's as, as simpl simplified as I can go. All right. So be watching for a difference of two squares to pop up in your work now. And I just wanted to, we might have seen it some today, but definitely it will come up soon if not so far. All right, another kind of factoring that you need to look for in these simplified problems, simplifying problems, is this kind of factoring. Suppose we have, um, yeah, we'll, we'll go for gold here. Let's say cosecant squared x minus cotangent x minus 3. And again, these are like little puzzles, and there are sometimes more than one way to get to the simplified answer. So go for a while, and if it seems to be getting less simplified, then abandon it and try something else. So let's, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> So let's see what we can do with this one. Well, we can't factor it until we have the same function throughout. So what would be a good idea to substitute in so that I get the same function throughout? Well, I see this is a cosecant squared. And that always points me to the Pythagorean theorem, I mean the Pythagorean ideas over here, where I do see a cosecant squared. So what if I replace cosecant squared in our problem with 1 plus cotangent squared. Do you see how that would give us the same function throughout the problem? So 1 plus cotangent squared is the same as cosecant squared. And I'm going to substitute that. And there, now I have at least the same trig function throughout the problem. So let's simplify what's there. We have a 1 and a minus 3. And we have a cotangent squared minus cotangent and a minus 2 when I combine the 1 and the minus 3. And here's where I will need to factor it the other way. This is not a difference of two squares. This is called factoring, a tri, uh, it's just called factoring, and it's when we find the first term times the first term will give us that, and the last term times the last term will give us this, and the sum of the inner and outer products have to give us that, like FOIL. So I know if the first times the first gives me cotangent, it's going to have to be cotangent x, cotangent x. And there's not a whole lot of choices, but there are some. To get minus 2, what times, it's, what, times it, what times what will give us minus 2? Well, we can have a 2, a plus 2, and a minus 1, or a minus 1 and a plus 2. And since this is minus, a uh, uh, word to the wise is give the larger value the minus sign. It doesn't always work out, especially as we have other values in front of coefficients in front of these terms, but for this one it should. Let's see. The inner product gives us a minus 2 cotangent. And the outer product gives us a plus 1. So when you combine a minus 2 and a plus 1, you do get a minus 1, which is what this represents. So you have factored it. So in order to use that in the middle of an expression, let's try 
this one. I'm not sure if this is a good one because I haven't worked it out previously, but to my eye, it looks like it would. So this one is tangent to the fourth x plus 2 tangent squared x plus 1. All right, so I'm going to use regular FOIL type factoring and I see that the first times the first is probably going to be tangent squared times tangent squared and that would give me a tangent to the fourth first times first and the last times the last is going to be a one let's check the inner product one tangent squared outer one tangent squared they add to give me two tangent squared so I have factored it so what can I do once I'm at that spot in order to simplify it well, I see that a tangent squared plus 1, if I look up here, my Pythagorean IDs, I see that it's secant squared. So I can come back here and call this secant squared. And this is also. And then I get secant to the fourth x. And that is as simplified as this will go. All right, so the other thing I need to show you tonight is adding. So I will do that on part two. So see you in a few.